CBS presents this program in color. One of these ladies has been married for more than 10 years, is over 30 years old, yet for several months posed successfully as a 16-year-old high school student. What is your name, please? My name is Lynn Tornabee. My name is Lynn Tornabee. My name is Lynn Tornabee. Only one of these ladies is the real Lynn Tornabee. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Katz, Orson Bean, Kitty Carlisle, plus 100 members of our studio audience on to tell the truth. for helping you find the joy of a slender figure. And now, here's our host on To Tell the Truth, Bob Collier. Thank you very much, and good evening and welcome to our last program in the nighttime series of To Tell the Truth. Oh. I would like, however, to remind everyone that the panel and I will continue to be with you every afternoon in color on CBS. And our daytime programs bring you new and interesting challengers, and in every way, I'm sure you'll find it a lot of fun. And for a modest fee, we'll come to your house. <laughs> <laughs> Again tonight, we're going to give that group of 100 persons in our studio audience a chance to vote electronically every time we play a game on To Tell the Truth. So audience, stay alert, locate those voting machines, and get ready with them. And panel, if you will, please open up that first envelope and follow along with me. I, Lynn Tornabeen, celebrated my 34th birthday and 10th wedding anniversary as a junior in high school. I decided that in order to write an intelligent book about teenagers, I had to live their life and examine their world from the inside. Dressed as a typical teenager with my hair cut in bangs and hidden behind a pair of fake eyeglasses, I registered in the 11th grade. For the next several months, I talked, thought, and acted like a 16-year-old girl. I went to football games and parties, felt the teenager's fear when I hadn't done my homework, and suffered her agonizing need to be liked. No one suspected I was an imposter. I was accepted by both the students and the teachers. The result of my fascinating experiment is soon to be published as a book called I Passed as a Teenager, signed Lynn Tornabeen. <laughs> These three ladies all claim to be Lynn Tornabeen. We'll start the questioning with the star of the Broadway hit musical, Elia Darling, Horse and Bean. Thank you. Uh, number three, what is the incidence of uh, things like uh, illicit reading of copies of Superman behind geography books and things like that? Does it still go on in school today? True Story magazine, I think. Ah, yeah. things have moved up, yeah. And True <laughs> Story's a little gamey compared to what it was when I was a kid. Well, things move on, I suppose. <laughs> Number one, how about things like smoking bananas and that sort of thing? Is that uh, not so much. Kumquats, maybe a pineapple or two, <laughs> nothing. I say, uh, all right. Number two, is it true that all teenage girls want to be liked? Definitely. When I was a teenage boy, I would have liked any teenage girl if they'd looked my way. <laughs> oh, they, this is their biggest need, I think. Is it? Well, they managed to keep it hidden from the teenage boys. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number three, who was in cahoots with you in the school? I don't know exactly what you well, mean. Well, I mean, was the principal in on it? Or? Oh, no. Is no. This, no one knew. Nobody was in on it? No. No one knew. Ah, number two, were you able to do the work? I have a, a child in the 11th grade, and I couldn't do the work. <laughs> It wasn't easy. <laughs> what about the math? Oh. <laughs> um, number one, where was this? Somewhere out west, I can't. I'm not at liberty to say. Number three, well, did they ever discover that this was an imposter? No. Well, how did you leave? I just left. Uh, you were a dropout in the 11th grade. I was, <laughs> yes. Number two. Another title for the book. <laughs> Tom Poston. Oh, well, uh, did you graduate number three? No. I mean, graduate. did you even graduate from the 11th grade? You mean this time around? <laughs> well, let me ask, number one, how long were you in, registered in, in school as a teenager? I can't say that either. Okay, okay. 
Number two, did you, have you written other books? Yes. What was the title? Uh, What's a Jewish Girl? I, the, I, that's why I recognize the name. I love that book. I won't ask you questions about that. Number three, what about dating? Did you go out on dates? Not very many. Let me ask number one, where did you say you lived? when you registered in the school. Did you say you lived with your folks or? No, I was with a guardian. And, and that was your husband? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did I understand you say you have a child? Or two or three? Peggy Cass. Thank you. Oh, and number three, what did you do on parent-teacher's nights? I mean, who showed up for you? Uh, no, no one spoke for me. I, did, I had a guardian, though. I had a guardian. Uh, number two, did you find it hard to speak their language? I mean, you know, the slang that they speak, or did you catch on to it? Uh, you had to listen closely. It's, it's changed a bit since my first go around. Uh, number one, did you have to, like, do your eyes all black? Do the kids wear lots of makeup now? A lot of makeup. A lot number of makeup. two, I'd like to ask are the kids essentially different now than they were when you were in the 11th grade? No, they're not. They, you mean the teenagers really aren't bad? Basically, as they have not changed, no. Uh, number three, when you did date, oh, That's all we have time for. It's time to mark your ballots without consultation and without change. And the team of challenges will, of course, receive $250 for each incorrect vote. And while you're voting, panel, it's time for our studio audience to vote. On the voting machines in front of each of you, you will find three buttons. Now, when I say vote, please select number one, number two, or number three. Are you ready? Vote. Hey, well, your votes have been registered. Now let's find out how our panelists voted. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for that uh, first little minute up there. She's tiny, and I think that would help. And uh, she, she appears to be quiet. I think that might help her, too. I didn't, I forgot what the one said who said she dated, but I think that would be a risk with a husband. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Might not be bad with teenage boys, you never can tell. Oh. I voted for number three, because she has one of those faces that has wide bones and everything, and they never get wrinkled, so she could pass as young. Orson. I was forced to vote for number two, because she looks as if she could go back to the 11th grade, even in the same school, and fool them again. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. I think they could all fool them, but I voted for number three, because she said she didn't date very much, and I think that's safer. Very right, well, we'll find out now who got the most votes from our studio audience. Our audience voted for number two. So let's find out now which of these ladies, in truth, is Lynn Tornabeen. Will the real Lynn Tornabeen please stand up? Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Judy Siegel. I'm a housewife from Baldwin, Long Island, and I have two children. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Peggy Maynard. I'm from Pound Ridge, New York. I've just completed a year of reigning as Mrs. New York State, and I have eight children. That there, let's see, there were one, two incorrect votes from our panel and one incorrect vote from our studio audience. That's three times $250 for a total of $750, ladies. Thank you for gracing our show. Good night and God bless you. <laughs> we'll meet our next team of challenges in just a minute, right after this message. This is one of the very people. A very person is a person who dearly loves flavor. The strongest, deepest, richest flavor she can find. And here it is, in a diet food. Sego just made some special very flavors that are the richest, deepest, sweetest to be found anywhere. And put them in their own special can. Naturally, they are named very chocolate, very vanilla, very strawberry, and very chocolate marshmallow. Flavor so very rich. So very deep. But you might not like them if you're not a very person. But I bet you are. Rich, pure country cream. 
there's more than double the cream of ordinary milk in pet evaporated milk. Still the in ingredient for today's cooking. Pet milk is in here. In here. Pet milk is in with today's cooking. Now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Jesse Roper Mohorovic. My name is Jesse Roper Mohorovic. My name is Jesse Roper Mohorovic. Follow along again with your copies of this one, if you will, panel. I, Jesse Roper Mohorovic, have just received my commission as an ensign in the United States Navy. This marks the latest episode in a life always curiously connected with the sea. It all started during World War II, when the Farrell Line's ship, City of New York, on which my mother was a passenger, was torpedoed 25 miles off the coast of North Carolina by a Nazi submarine. Mother made it to a lifeboat just in time to give birth to a baby, me. Despite the cold weather, I was kept warm, swaddled in a woman passenger's turban. 24 hours later, we were rescued by the destroyer USS Jesse Roper. In gratitude, my mother named me after the ship. As soon as I was old enough, the president of the steamship line paid part of my way through college, and after graduation, gave me a job. Soon, I hoped to go to sea as a naval officer, concluding the strange chain of events which began that cold March night when I became, as far as I know, the only person in history to be born in a lifeboat. Signed, Jesse Roper Mohorovic, Ensign, United States Navy. These three gentlemen, as you heard, all claim to be Jesse Roper Mohorovic. And we'll start the cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty. Thank you, bud. Uh, number three, do you believe in fate? I certainly do. <laughs> uh, number two, who helped with the birth in the lifeboat? There was a ship's doctor aboard. Oh, that was very good. Uh, number one, who was the secretary of the Navy? Uh, the Honorable Paul M. Nitzi. Who? Paul M. Nitzi. Uh, number two, did you go to Annapolis? No, I did not. Did you, number three? No. Uh, number two, how did you get commissioned? I went to OCS, uh -huh. Officers Candidate School. Thank you. Uh, number one, you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I do. All born under less dramatic circumstances, I trust. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Where were they born? Well, my older sister was born in Ankara, <coughs> pardon me, Ankara, Turkey, and my younger sister here in New York. Ah. Tom Poston. Uh, number three, what does your dad do, or what did your dad do? Dad, do, dad, do, dad. <laughs> what did your father do? <laughs> my father was associated with the Yugoslavian government during the war and is deceased. And do you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I do. Are they born in Turkey and here and stuff? That's correct. Oh, I see. Number two, uh, uh, how did you happen to know the president of the lines? He wasn't on that ship, was he, at the time? No, but the event caused a great publicity uh, write-up, and he was grateful, and therefore he, we got Thank to know each other. Number one, do you know the first place in the uh, U.S. that you landed? Yes, Norfolk, Virginia. Do you know what the laws are about uh, whether you're a U.S. citizen or not? Yes, I am. Uh, I don't know if I should continue. Peggy Cass. Oh, well, sure, continue, number one. Well, it's a very unusual circumstance. I'm a naturalized citizen, uh, primarily because of the fact that uh, my mother was traveling on a diplomatic visa. Thank you. Well, number three, what were your people doing in, in Turkey if you're Yugoslavian? Well, we weren't in Turkey. Uh, we were coming from uh, the Union of South Africa, Cape Town. Oh, gee, you're a very well-traveled baby. Uh, <laughs> number two, where did you go to college? Yale University. Number three, did you go to Yale? No, I went to Swarthmore. Number one, where did you go? I went to Fordham. Thank you. <laughs> uh, number three, are you engaged? No, I'm married. <laughs> he was engaged. I read something about the fact, well, he actually if he was engaged, he got married. Orson, stop looking at me like that. Orson B. Are you engaged? Well, I'm interested. <clears throat> a baby. <laughs> Take another look. He's not a baby anymore. Well, when did you read about him? That he was born in a lifeboat. A baby, all right. <laughs> Number one, uh, could, you, could you run for president? Uh, not as a naturalized citizen, no. But if you had been American, yet born in a lifeboat, if your folks had been American, could you have run for president? I believe so, yeah. Believe so? Number two, now, uh, how, uh, 24 hours, uh, uh, 
was there any uh, one that didn't get on the boat or get on other boats or how big a disaster was this thing you were born in? It was a large disaster. I don't know how many didn't get on the boat. Slipshod memory, eh, number two, eh? <laughs> oh, the and that's all the time we have. So no consultation and no changing. Once you've marked, and do mark your ballots, if you will. And again, while you're voting, we ask our studio audience to vote. When I say vote again, select number one, number two, or number three. Are you ready? Vote. Your votes have been registered. We'll see how the panel voted. Tom, for whom oh, did you vote? Wait, wait, wait. All right. I, uh, once again, I voted for number one. Not because he looked like he could pass as a teenager, of course. But uh, I believed him when he said the, that thing, those things about his family being born in Turkey and here. And I think it's number one. Peggy. I have deduced it as number one. At last, I've done it right. Number three couldn't have gone to Swarthmore and worked for steamship line because it's in Pennsylvania. And number two, they don't have steamships in New Haven, but at Fordham, you could go to work on a steamship line because it's in New York. Uh, Orson. I apologize for the rest of the panel. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> There's the first thing I ever said here. I voted for number one because he looks like a Turk. <laughs> Although he uh, said, isn't that fellow the Secretary of the Navy? The, 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 said honorable Paul Yes, no. I voted Kitty. for number three because he looks as though he might be Slavic, and I believe he went to Swarthmore, and he looks like a bouncing, beautiful baby. Now? <laughs> All right, let's find out now who got the most votes from our studio audience. Our studio audience voted for... Number one. Very well, let's learn now which of these gentlemen, in truth, is Jesse Roper Mohorovic. Will the real Jesse Roper Mohorovic please stand up? <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Walter Alton, Jr. I recently graduated from Columbia Law School and I'm now with the law firm of Martin, Clearwater, and Bell. What do you do? My name is Bob Odenweller. I sell real estate for the Walter J. Smith Company on Long Island. Thank you. Check the score. We find that the panel was reasonably smart that time, and so was our studio audience. Therefore, there was only one incorrect vote, but that's worth $250, and along with that comes our thanks. We enjoyed having you here and hope you enjoyed being here. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> and play another game in a minute, but now listen to this. Boat ready for launching? Yep. And I'm not. Ooh, what a stomach ache. Celebrated too much last night, huh? Soothe your upset stomach with Pepto-Bismol. Pepto-Bismol has coatability for soft, smooth coating action that spreads like a creamy blanket of relief throughout your irritated stomach. Relieves distress in your lower tract, too. Put coatability between you and stomach distress with soothing pink Pepto-Bismol. Too much sun is no fun. Help! I'm on fire! Unguentine to the rescue! Get fast, temporary relief. Unguentine stops sunburn pain cold. Cool Unguentine. Ow! Cuts and scratches... Unguentine stops hurt skin pain cold every time you spray it on. Cool, Unguentine. Unguentine sprays squeeze or push button for sunburn and first aid. And now let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is James Norbury. My name is James Norbury. My name is James Norbury. Follow along again, if you will, with your copies of this one. I, James Norbury, am an expert in the art of hand knitting. For seven years, I taught knitting on British television. I have written ten books on the subject, including the authoritative Encyclopedia of Knitting. I am also chief designer for the world's largest firm of wool spinners. 
Here is one of my designs. This is Gail Sheldon wearing a mocha knitted play suit. It features a crew neck with diamond motif and little boy shorts. This is June Ferguson wearing my marine blue at home ensemble with a crochet accented button front tunic over knee length bloomers. I am an accomplished knitter myself. As a matter of fact, in cable stitch circles, I am known as the Dior of the knitting needles. Signed, James Norbury. <laughs> Three gentlemen, all claim to be one James Norbury. We'll start with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you. Number three, do you cast on by hand or by needle? I cast on by hand. Thank you. Uh, number two, uh, what is the difference between knit and purl? Knitting is done with the wool at the front of the work and purling with wool at the back of the work. Thank you. Uh, number one, how much wool to a skein? Oh, uh, about one ounce. Thank you. Um, number two, were you to knit a skirt, would you do it on two needles, two straight needles, or one long round needle? I should do it on two straight needles. Oh, I do it on one round needle. Orson B. My great aunt used to knit profiles of Conrad Nagel on wrappers. Number two, do you ever do any pictures or just designs like that? I just design. Just design. Well, that's a pity. Number three, uh, who is Madame Lafarge? Madame Lafarge yeah. is a designer in Paris. Designer <laughs> <laughs> in Paris. In Paris. I guess she is, yes. Uh, uh, number one, uh, how, how long was your show on in, uh, in uh, England? Uh, approximately seven years. You had a big following, did you? People tuned in next week to see how it came out or what? Uh, I really wouldn't know. I think so, yes. Yes? <laughs> well, number two, did you give instructions? Oh, the time went like that. Kitty Carlisle. Number three, it says here you're a champion knitter. Do you have a knit? Uh, you know, like in public, for instance, if you're on an airplane or something to pass the time. And what do the people think when they see you doing it? Well, they, 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 I don't care what they think, but if they ask me questions about it, I tell them the truth, uh, that men were the first knitters. The shepherds were knitters, uh -huh. and they, they used to knit their hats. Well, good for you. I approve of that. Uh, number one, do you agree with that when you purl, the, the, the thread is in the back of the needle? The, yes, I agree with that. You do. Uh, number three, what is the largest woman's magazine dedicated to knitting in England? A woman's own. Number two, what is the women's home industries? Tom Poston. Uh, number two, do you ever help out uh, factories with their uh, knitting? No. Well, number one, do you? No, never. Pardon me? Never. Uh, number three, may I ask you, as an individual knitter, do factories, would factories be able to turn out either one of these uh, garments? No, they wouldn't. I actually have no competition at all. I work for the largest wool spinners in the world. Uh, they are in Darlington, Yorkshire. The name is Peyton and Baldwin. And that's all the time we have. Much time for you now have. to knit one and purl two with your reasons and your votes. So mark your ballots at once. No change. And no consultation. And of course, again, while you're voting, panel, our studio audience will be asked to vote as well. So again, when I say vote, will you select button number one, number two, or number three? Are you ready? Vote. Again, your votes have been registered. Let's find out once more how our panelists voted. Tom, how did you vote? Bud, for the last time, uh, on to uh, tell the truth, uh, I'm retiring my crayon. <laughs> I voted for number two. I, I thought he was uh, just a little truculent as a man might be who thought we were going to make fun of his avocation and profession. So I voted for him. Peggy. As I cast off the last stitch in my sweater, I want to tell you, I voted for number two because he never looked up. He kept looking down. You know, when you knit, you look down. And he's... <laughs> Orson B. And with a lump in my throat, and I'll see him tomorrow at 3 o'clock. <laughs> I uh, voted for number three because to me, he had the gift of gab. He had a sense of humor. He worked in a plug for his company. All three 
things indicate a touch of show business, and I don't think you could sit on TV and just knit and keep anyone watching it. And your poor three is raveling. It's unraveling a little. What a shame. Yes, this suit itself is so threadbare that I sent it to be cleaned. They returned it on a spool. Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number three because I think one and two gave us the wrong answers on the purling, and number three said that men should knit, and I think it's good therapy, and there's no reason why they shouldn't knit. Oh, yeah. Very well, let's find out who got the most votes from our studio audience. Our audience voted for... Number three. So, let's learn now which of these gentlemen in truth is James Norbury. Will the real James Norbury please stand up? <laughs> Good. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is John Hogg, and I'm the chief accountant for United Nations Children's Fund. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Roy Dexter, and I am an expert in the art of yoga. Two incorrect vote from our panel uh, panelists and one incorrect vote from our studio audience for a total of seven hundred and fifty dollars, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Good night. God bless you. But right now, this important message. Aged cheddar cheese with mellow red wine. A great favorite of England's old coach houses. Great today in coach house salad dressing. New from Seven Seas. First dressing made with aged cheddar cheese and red wine. Creamy, so the flavor clings to salads. It's unsinkable. Won't sink to the bottom of the bowl. Now taste cheddar cheese and red wine in coach house. Another delicious new dressing from Seven Seas. Remember when the best tasting spread came from a tub... Well, it still does. Chiffon, the soft margarine with the delicious melting flavor of the expensive spread. That's because chiffon is made soft with light, delicate safflower oil. And safflower oil makes chiffon highest in polyunsaturates, lowest in saturated fat of all margarines. Chiffon, best taste that ever came out of a tub. Well, my good friends, this program concludes the nighttime series of To Tell the Truth, which began on December 18th, 1956. It's been a happy ten and a half years for all of us, and we sure hope to be back again in the nighttime schedule at some future date. Yay, yay. In the meantime, don't forget to join the five of us every afternoon, Monday through Friday, on our interesting daytime To Tell the Truth series, and I know you'll enjoy it. We look forward to having you there. So until tomorrow afternoon, this is Bud Collier reminding you to tell the truth. <laughs> is a Mark Goodson, Bill Putman production. And for Johnny Olson speaking, tonight's program was pre-recorded. Ernie Kovacs is at the helm when a nutty band of bank robbers set sail for comedy in Sail a Crooked Ship on the CBS Thursday night movies. And on Friday, Rosalind Russell stars in the Five Finger Exercise on the CBS Friday night movies. To Tell the Truth was brought to you tonight by Chiffon, a soft margin made with light and delicate safflower oil. Good tasting, good to you, soft Chiffon. Coronet Blue, two words that trigger the ultimate in suspense for a man without a memory. Frank Convert stars in Coronet Blue, in color. Premiering next Monday night on CBS.